What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, a lot of people will ask, why does your shirt say UCI or PSD and why does it say UCI on the side of your pickup truck? Well, in short, our company specializes in public safety diving and underwater criminal investigations. And in today's video, I'm gonna actually take you on an underwater investigation of a pickup truck in the water. Now, if you follow us on Instagram, you probably saw a little teaser clip of this truck. But in today's video, I'm actually gonna show you the investigation. I'm gonna show you how we can conduct the investigation and why we conduct the investigation the way we do. And then of course, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get this vehicle out of the water. Now, a lot of people say, well, why do you do this type of work? Well. We have very limited resources in our area and our local departments don't really have dive teams that do this. This is something that we specialize in. So we do a lot of contract work. We do it for local departments, we do it for private companies, and of course we do it for insurance companies as well. Anytime that you deal with a vehicle in the water, it is technically a crime scene and law enforcement has to be involved because now you've introduced hazmatic material into the waterway and at least it's littering. So law enforcement have to be involved. Plus, you got private companies such as, say, Duke Power. Duke Power is the controlling uh, ENT that runs our lakes here in our area. So they have to be involved. And then, of course, let's say if you do have a vehicle here, the insurance company's got to be involved too because they need to determine whether this was an intentional or an accident as well before they do payouts. So they hire us. All three ENTs will hire us to come out and do work just like you're going to see today. So we're going to go out here. we got a job to do up at Lake James. We're going to run up here, jump in. First of all, see if we can locate the vehicle. We're going to do a quick investigative search around the vehicle. We're going to do an internal uh, search as well of the vehicle. And then we're going to try to do our best to preserve as much evidence as we can as we bring this vehicle up. A lot of times during the salvage part of these dives, vehicles, airplanes, whatever it may be, can get damaged. So we're going to do everything that we can to preserve as much evidence and document as much as we can before we bring it up. All right, guys, let's talk about underwater criminal investigations and how we actually perform them. Uh, this is very similar to what you guys see on any other salvage dive that we do. We go out, we locate an object, we figure out the best way to bring it to the surface and extract it from the, the waterway, except the fact that there's a lot more documentation whenever we do it this way, and we have to really concern ourselves with preserving evidence when we're underwater. Now, like I said earlier, there's three different ENTs that we typically will do this for. We'll do it for local law enforcement departments, we'll do it for private companies, and we will do it for insurance companies as well. Now, I think that it pretty much goes without saying, law enforcement, they don't really have the resources that we do as a private company to be able to do this. So we're their eyes and ears when we're underwater. When we do it for private companies, as we are doing for uh, this particular video, a local record company was tasked with getting this vehicle out of the water and law enforcement asked them to remove it. So obviously they don't have the divers or the resources to do it. And of course, so we're kind of working for both here. We're doing it for law enforcement to document and to record what, what happened to the vehicle. And then of course, we're going down to rig it to get it lifted out by the record company as well. And then of course, insurance, a lot of times, insurance companies will want to know certain things. What was the condition of the vehicle? Was the vehicle left in park? Was it running? Was it in neutral? Was it in drive? So we can document, we can discover all that prior to pulling the vehicle up out of the waterway and that's where underwater criminal investigations really come into play you're going to see several different things and uh, tips and techniques that we use in this video and i'll kind of go through them with you that will help you uh be able to do this line of work very successfully as well. And I'll be, I'll be breaking each one down individually and talk about why we do what we do underwater. Now, in public safety work in general, you really have two different types of dives that you're going to make. You're going to make a rescue dive or you're going to make a recovery dive. Now, I can honestly tell you that 99% of the dives that we do are uh, recovery dives. It is very rare that we're actually making a dive for rescue in our local area. Now, if you remember about two years ago, almost a year and a half ago, something like that, we had the 31 victims that we pulled out during the drowning. I kind of showed you some news articles. I'll link that article down below for you if, or that video if you want to go watch it. Um, that was a true rescue scenario. 
but in this case it is simply a recovery scenario and with recovery scenarios there is no need to rush please take your time if you do this type of work make sure your gear is in good working order before you ever get in the water and simply the the biggest reason that is is because you are going after an inanimate object that holds zero value once it's in that waterway and of course your life you're still alive you have more value than that so you want to make sure that you take your time do proper gear checks do proper pre-dive safety checks things like that before you ever get in the water but now that we're in the water let's talk about how we're going to search for this vehicle we know from law enforcement that this vehicle was traveling about 30 miles an hour before it hit the water we also know from eyewitnesses that it traveled about 150 foot offshore before it finally becomes submerged and so we decided to do our search since we know the entry point we know where it was last seen before it went down that we're just going to do a straight navigational search using a compass and we're looking for what's called a debris field anytime a vehicle strikes the waterway it's like hitting a brick wall you're going to have debris that breaks off that vehicle you're going to have damage that occurred to the vehicle and so we're just following a compass heading out, looking for a debris field, and hopefully we will swim up onto the truck. Now I'll go ahead and tell you here very briefly, you're going to see we pop right up on the truck. It's a very simple search for us, but we're documenting that debris field. Why? Well, it's part of the crime scene as well. So we want to document everything that we see. Once we locate the vehicle, we're going to do one of three things. Now typically we will go ahead and mark the vehicle immediately in this particular situation because we did have such good visibility. I didn't mark it right away so I went ahead and skipped to the second step and we do what's called a 360 search so we're gonna go all the way around this vehicle and we are going to look for victims we're gonna look for debris we're gonna look for damage we're gonna just get an overall picture of what's going on we can uh, record depths we can record just about anything we need in this particular situation of course I'm radioing up what the tag is that way my surface personnel can relay that to, to law enforcement and they can be running that. Uh, I'm also making documentation of which way the vehicle is facing. So once I mark this vehicle, I can radio up that it's facing north, south, east, west, whatever the heading is, and law enforcement can go ahead and start drawing out their crime scene map based off the descriptions that we're giving them through the communications. So now that we've done a 360, obviously I went to one side, my die buddy went to the other side. Now we're going to do what's called an internal search, and there's two ways to do this in this particular situation the clarity of the water is good enough that we can actually see all the way through the vehicle simply by shining our lights in it now a lot of people will say well why don't you just go ahead and go through the vehicle and you can do an internal inspection or investigation that way and we do sometimes typically if we do that we're only going to do an arm's length and that's typically what we do if we're looking for victims things like that but we also want to preserve what's in the vehicle and if I was to open a door here then obviously any of the evidence it's inside could float away it could come out and if you're in a limited visibility situation you want to preserve that evidence by leaving it inside the vehicle but we've done our 360 we've done our quick internal inspection as well so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark the vehicle and marking the vehicle is pretty self-explanatory we take an SMB we inflate it shoot it to the surface tie off our reel and now it's marked and this does a couple of things once again for the surface crew and whoever the law enforcement officer in charge is this gives them an idea of exactly where the vehicle is located he can take the description of the vehicle that we gave through comms and the direction that it's facing and he can draw out a crime scene map if you will for his investigation no Number two, it permanently marks that vehicle in the unlikelihood event something occurs during the salvage stage. So let's say we're using bags to lift this uh, vehicle up. If the bags bust or a rope breaks or whatever and it sinks back to the bottom, it is still marked. We do not have to go and research for it. It's marked. There's a permanent buoy on it at this point. Uh, and same thing. In this particular case, we're not going to be lifting it with bags. We're going to be bringing it up to the wrecker service. Uh, but let's say that cable in the wrecker um, truck breaks and the vehicle rolls back down into the water then by all means it is permanently marked as well we don't have to go back and search it we just swim over to the buoy descend back down and then re-rig it if we need to now that everything's done I'm just doing another quick internal inspection here I'm looking inside looking for victims looking for evidence whatever I can and primarily I'm looking for the gear shift knob and uh, where you put your key in the ignition switch I'm looking to see if it was turned on I'm looking to see if it was in park neutral or drive and of course I'm gonna be documenting that for not just 
against law enforcement. I'm also going to be documenting that for the insurance company as well. This is something that a lot of the insurance companies want to know. What was the condition of the vehicle prior to it hitting the water? Uh, ironically, a lot of people who can't afford their vehicles, they'll try to sink them in the lake and claim that they're stolen. But yet, if it's in neutral and no one's around, then obviously we know that sometimes people will try to commit insurance fraud. So we're documenting all that information. Now what we're doing is we're looking for attachment points. So on this particular pickup truck, there's two tow hooks right up underneath the bumper. That's going to be great to hook to since we are using the record company to do it instead of bags. Uh, what you see there is actually a magnet. So we were very, very fortunate on this particular investigation. A local fisherman was able to find this vehicle with his sonar and he actually dropped a magnet down on top of it and they were able to tie that rope off to the dock as well. And so all I did there was simply slide the magnet on up the hood a little bit and that way um, it didn't come off during the towing process. It was nice and locked in and that made it easier too if something was to happen we would be able to relocate it very easily. But now that we've located it, we've spoke with law enforcement, we did all of our documentation, now we are going to go ahead and rig it for the salvage stage. Now what you're seeing here now is we've got to go out about a, the 150 foot distance again towing a cable and a chain system. And I can tell you right now, this cable and chain system is extremely heavy. The bladder of my BC will not hold it up while I'm swimming it out there. So I'm just using one of the 50 pound lift bags. And if you watched our rig rundown video where I showed you my public safety rig this is one of those 50 pound lift bags and this is what I actually use it for whether I'm lifting a body that's in a body bag or I'm lifting something like this to swim it out that's what we use them for so this is a good representation of how we use it even during the salvage stage but we're going to go ahead and swim uh, that cable system all the way out to uh, back out to the vehicle and you'll see here hopefully I've got it edited in for you. you'll see just how far offshore we are like I stated that truck would hit about 30 miles an hour before it hit the waterway and it swam out or it floated out before it sunk but now we're going to go ahead and we're going to descend down and the cool thing about the lift bag as well you know we can control it as we're descending down so that it doesn't just drop down in the mud and that chain and that cable stir it up to where we can't see we can actually control it as we're descending and we can keep tension on it as well as we're hooking up the cable system so that we're guaranteed those hooks stay into the the tow bars or the tow hooks of the vehicle as well now we were very fortunate on this particular uh, recovery um, in the fact that this truck was in really good shape. It was sitting upright. It was on all fours um, and we could get access to both tow hooks. So in short, what we've got is about a 150 foot cable system. On the end of the cable system, we have several tow straps and chains to give us that extra bit of length. And we have two individual hooks that's going to go to the uh, tow eyes or the tow hooks on the front of the truck as well. So think of a, a big long Y and that Y portion is what's going to go to the tow hooks. This is also going to make it a lot easier when the record truck starts pulling up on this vehicle. It's going to turn it as a pivot point where that Y comes into play and it's going to line that truck up just perfect to come up the ramp at the access. So this was a pretty textbook uh, investigation and recovery and to be honest it was probably one of the easiest ones we've ever done with the exception of it was so far offshore. Now one of the things that I didn't really talk about earlier is our depth and all that. We are at about 20 feet of depth. I think it was 19 point something on depth according to the computers um, but we're 150 foot offshore and we do have a pretty strong current too. That's another reason that the visibility is as good as what it is because as we start it up that current's blowing that turbidity by fairly fast I would say that we're in a probably three quarters of a knot to a full knot of current here so we are having to deal with that a little bit but it's a pretty textbook investigation and recovery um, and all the information that you guys are seeing in this video we were able to relay that information to uh, the local law enforcement that's doing the investigation and of course to the tow company as well and I have no doubt because this happens to us a lot I'm sure the insurance company is going to want the raw footage of this uh, because they they simply like to see it all too they want to know the condition and all that now I'm not going to give you the details of this because it's still under investigation but like I said we record all different things the condition of the vehicle was it in drive was it in park was the vehicle turned on uh, what was attached to the pedals we record all that information and that's why I'm saying a lot of times insurance companies will really want to know that stuff hence that's why we do what it is that we do
But now that the vehicle is hooked up, we're going to go ahead and go up and get in a safe location so that the record company can actually start doing their job, which is, of course, extracting it from the waterway. Like I said, I really like doing uh, dives like this because it's very limited workforce. We do our investigation, we do all the rigging, and then, of course, we get out of the water and we let the tow company do most of the hard work, which is actually bringing it out. Now, of course, if we were doing this without the tow company, we would be hooking bags. We'd find certain points where we could hook to and lift it up. That's typically what you guys see us do on boats, but when it comes to vehicles like this, if we can do it with a record company, it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot safer for us. So now that we're out of the water, you can see the record company is going to go ahead and start uh, winching this vehicle out. Um, they're going to take their time as well because they don't want to spread debris into the waterway. They want to do uh, the minimum amount of damage possible uh, anytime that they're pulling something out of the waterway. And there you can kind of see the, the conditions of the water. Very, very windy on that day. Like I said, we had three quarters of, to almost a full knot of current that we were trying to deal with. But they're just taking their time. And you will start to see this truck... Um, um, get, breach the surface here very briefly. Now one of the last things that we do is once it's breached up enough that we can get in and operate, we will stop the operation temporarily just to do one final sweep or search of the vehicle. In the worst case scenario, now this was just a simple recovery. This, there's no victims located in this vehicle, but if there was a victim in this vehicle, we do not want the general public seeing that. Obviously if a news crew or something's down there, we don't want them filming that and putting it out there for the public to see. So we will kind of stop the vehicle here one of us will get back in the water make another sweep um, and then if we needed to penetrate the vehicle to get somebody out at that point we could but um yeah that's kind of how we do that and why we do it that way it's just you know we don't really want the public seeing certain things nobody wants to see that there's a lot of spectators that come out and watch things like this especially on a summer day this is still in the winter time by the time you guys see this it'll probably be uh, mid to late april this is actually uh this is occurring early to mid march during the filming of this so Typically in the summertime, if this was to occur, there'd be a lot of spectators, and spectators don't need to see that. I know gore and stuff are great in horror movies, but nobody really wants to see that in real life. So we do everything that we can to uh, protect the people in general and to respect victim, victims families as well so if it was a situation where law enforcement did not want that that victim removed from the vehicle then obviously we would have tarps over this vehicle before we continued but that's basically why it stopped here we stop we do another investigation of it real quick and then we continue on now that all that's done we are going to go ahead and get this vehicle completely removed from the waterway now what you're seeing me run down there and do real quick is i'm gonna go ahead and remove my lift bag that i had on the tow hook and I'm going to remove my SMB and we feel that at this point the vehicle's out of the waterway enough that if it does go down it's not going to go out as far as it was and number two I don't want to damage my lift bag or my SMB to be honest with you if it gets caught up underneath that vehicle it gets struggling under the tire then of course that's damage and I don't want to damage my equipment so you'll see I'm gonna go ahead and get these things removed real quick undid the lift bag there. I'm going to go ahead and undo my SMB from the passenger mirror, which is where I hooked it to. And then once all that's said and done, the record company continue on. They can bring it up. I believe they're going to put this one on a flatbed. But the last thing that we do, of course, is paperwork. Paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Just like every time you go diving, you're going to log your dive. Well, we, we have specialized uh, report forms that we do that we can turn over to insurance companies. We can turn them to the record company. Or in our case, we can turn them over to law enforcement as well and then if anything happens we can go to court we can testify we can take the footage it's another reason we film everything we can take the footage and we can testify exactly what it was we saw in her there and the condition of vehicles persons airplanes things like that Guys, before we end the video, I want to show you the report system that we use a lot of times for this. This is just a basic PSD uh, UCI report system. It's about 15 to 20 different pages here. And we use this every time we do a PSD call out, a UCI call out, or even just our salvage. All the salvage videos that you guys watch us do, this report actually gets filled out. And we can uh, turn this over to whoever needs it, whether it's the insurance company, whether it's a private company that needs that documentation for whatever reason, or even local law enforcement. We 
can turn this report system over. And in short, it's just got all the information. So the first page is usually just going to be diver information. It's going to have a quick little narrative. And I'm going to skip through a couple of these because there's certain ones that I really want you guys to see because a lot of stuff gets recorded. Obviously, body recovery worksheets, we can go all through it and kind of if we do recover a body, we can talk about the condition that it's in, if there's any injuries, anything from if it's skeletons, whatnot. We even have a crime scene sketch. Now, we take our footage that you guys see us film, we take that and we document the scene as well, anywhere from depths to distances, the whole nine yards, we put that on there as well. And I can keep on scrolling through here. A lot of these are checklists too for us, for the divers, but even vehicle reports. So on the particular video you just watched, this was very, very detailed out. There was a lot of information that was put on here. And if the information simply does not fit on the report, we just type it up and staple it to it as well. And it gets filed away. But a lot of different information is what we go put on here and it gets done on every single dive that we do public safety diving underwater criminal investigation or just our salvage dives as well it gets filled out it gets documented so there you go guys that's a uci dive that's an underwater criminal investigation that's a recovery dive you guys see us do all the salvage work but you don't really see the behind the scenes stuff of what we do after the fact and that report system is part of it as well but i really hope you enjoyed the video i hope it kind of piqued your interest in public safety diving and underwater criminal investigations and if it did and it's something you're interested in taking give us a call we can train you up both in public safety diving and underwater crime scene investigations as well maybe you can help your local department or maybe you can start a private team just just like ours as well but guys stay safe out there if you got any questions on psd work and uci drop me a comment down below and i'll try to answer it the best i can as quickly as i can but if you liked the video big thumbs up definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business